This is Derek with Reef Automation. This is episode 9 of the GHL versus Apex series. In this episode, we're going to go over the display options on both the Apex and the GHL. Now, we're going to first start with the Apex. So this is what the uh, display looks like. They have a newer display that has more of a silver border, but they are essentially exactly the same. I have one of the older displays here. So you'll notice on the display, it's got a couple different options for you. Uh, it's got four different quadrants here. Now you can adjust this by going to the display tab and then going to the first page. And to flip between the pages, you're gonna use the right and left buttons. Now on the Apex, they have these nice physical buttons to get through each thing. And if you look on the upper right hand corner, it tells you what page you're on. So right now we're on page three and then we can go to page four and so forth. If you click on it one more time, it goes back to page one. You'll notice in the programming that we have pages, page one, two, three, and four here. So if we wanted to enable the clock that's on the first line, we'd hit visible and then we'd hit clock and then we'd send it. And then you'll see the clock gets sent to the top. Now. When you first send a program to the display, you're gonna to need to flip pages for it to register. So if you flip pages back and forth, then you'll see the clock and the date on the top. Now on the next lines, you have the two lines there where you can put, you can see I have alkalinity and calcium, and then I have pH and salt. And of course you can adjust these. So you'll notice right now I have reef alkalinity, reef calcium, reef pH, and reef salt. Now what if I wanted to change my reef alkalinity upper left hand corner. I'd click on the second line. I would then click on alkalinity and then I would change that to let's say we want to do our reef magnesium instead. And then I'll send that and then my reef magnesium will show up there. So you'll see I have reef magnesium now and if I change the page it'll get rid of that little K there. You gotta flip the pages for it to re-register. Now you can also say none, so we can go over here and hit none. So if we didn't want something to show up in that quadrant, we can hit none. Obviously, like I said, you're going to have to flip the page back and forth for it to register. Then that's registered. Now you can also completely hide that line if you wanted to, so we can completely hide the line. And then again, flip the page for it to register. And now you only have one line there. So we'll put everything back to how it was. We'll put visible, and then we'll bring the alkalinity back. So then we'll flip the page for it to register here. Now we're back. Now at the bottom, you're gonna see that you can put your outlets. Now the outlets come from the little icons that are programmed in each of the outlets. So if I click on alarm and email and enable this line, it's now going to show if my alarm and email are on in the lower right hand corner. It also shrinks the salinity and the reef pH here, which is why I don't use the outlets because it's a little small. So I'm gonna say hidden and we'll bring everything back to how it was. So again, you have four pages that you can work with. I'm also going to turn off the clock because I don't use the clock either. I like using all four quadrants, nice and big letters and numbers so I can easily see this. But you can see you can add a few things to the display if you wanted to. So on the display, there's a couple other things you have. You have the up and down arrow. Now the up and down arrow will change the feed mode. So if you hit up and down, you can actually just have the feed mode get started. So if I wanted to feed mode D, I don't press anything, give it some time, and then feed mode D will start on its own. Now it'll tell you how many seconds is left with the feed mode. You can exit out of this menu and the feed mode will continue. You can also cancel the feed mode completely and it will stop the feed mode. Now if you hit the middle button, it's gonna get you into the menu. This is where you can actually uh, disable and enable certain features. We're not going to go through all of this, um, but as you can see there, this will give you your IP address, a couple setups, a couple other things that might be important to just see. 
You can also get all this information on the Fusion. So we'll hit home and we'll go back to this uh, main menu. Now you'll notice that these displays that they make are remote. Now they run about $100 here in the United States and you can plug them in remotely. They come with a pretty long cord, but if you need to extend them, they have Aquabus cables you can purchase that'll extend these pretty much as far as you want up to about 100 feet if you wanted to have a remote display. They are not wireless, they need to be hardwired in. There's a wire right here that connects to the Apex system. So that's our displays on the Apex. So now we're gonna move on to the GHL. All right, so now we're gonna talk about the GHL display. The GHL display is built into the controller itself, whereas with the Apex, they are separate and they don't come with the kits. You have to buy them separately. This has a built-in display. So we're gonna go over a couple things here. The uh, Wi-Fi on the left you will see is flashing green. That means that you are connected to your Wi-Fi. The MyGHL, if it is solid, will indicate that you are connected to the MyGHL service. The alarm will flash if you have an alarm, which we do right now. It'll tell you what the alarm is at the top there, and it'll also flash. Uh, the triangle will also tell you there's an alarm and will also flash. So a couple things on here. When you first get this, you're gonna to wanna to calibrate the keys. The keys are a little bit uh, difficult to press when you first get this unit, so you're gonna to wanna to calibrate them. So to do them, you go to the MyGHL, you go to the three lines on the top, you go to Extras, then you go to Capacitive Keys. At the bottom, it's gonna say Calibration, and then you're gonna to wanna to use your own calibration. When you click on that, you're gonna then press Calibrate Keys. When you press that, it's gonna pull up with something called Calibration Mode. Now it's gonna ask you to touch all the keys. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna use your finger and go through each one as if you were normally touching it. And then you're gonna wait a few seconds. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna send that calibration data down to the controller. And therefore it'll make the buttons a lot more responsive. I did this because I found that once after I did this, it was a lot easier to press the buttons. So I would recommend you doing that right away. So we're gonna to go to displays, which is right under switch channel. And this is where you can adjust what you see on the display. So the first thing of course is the time and date. Do you wanna see the time and date? So you can say show always, you can say show never, you can say rotate. You can say how long you want the display uh, duration to show the time and date. Now keep in mind the time and date will show up at the top of the screen where the alarm is now pulsing. So what we're gonna do to get rid of the alarms, or we're gonna turn off all the alarms so we don't have to see that anymore. So once you've cleared out all of your alarms, you're then gonna get the GHL logo to be uh, blue on the top to tell you that there's no alarms. The alarm is gonna no longer flash. And as I mentioned, you're now gonna see the time and date at the top. So now we wanna configure what we see there. So we're gonna go back to displays, which is under switch channels. And now you could say viewable elements, which is the next thing here. So what we want to be able to see is just our probes because we don't have any illumination set up. So we're going to set it up so we just see our temperature, pH, conductivity, and our redox. And that's all we want to be able to see. So you can put a little text here if you want to uh, have it display something upon startup. You can also adjust the brightness here and you can also adjust when you want dark mode to turn on. So if we hit save, we'll give that a second, and now you'll see we got our redox, our conductivity, our temperature, and our pH, and you'll see it keeps scrolling back and forth. You can only see two items at once, whereas with the Apex, you notice you can see four items and it has multiple pages. So next, we'll go over how to set up the feed mode similar to that of the Apex. Now to get into feed modes, you're gonna hit the X button. That's gonna get you into the feed modes and then you can just start them right here. So if you wanted to start feed mode two, let's say, you go to two and you hit um, the check mark and it's gonna, it's gonna flash an FP here, which means that it's doing a feed pause. And it will give you the time left in the upper left hand corner. Now if you wanted to cancel that, you can hit the X
and you go down to stop and you'll hit stop and then the feed mode is stopped. So like the Apex, it has a setup mode as well, which most of these setups can be done via the app or the control center. So if we hit the check mark, that'll get us to the menu. You can see sometimes I have to hit these buttons a few times for them to register, even after the calibration. Sometimes it doesn't take. So it has a number of configurations, and as I mentioned, most of these are in the app and we're not going to go over those at this time. So that's the GHL display and that's how it works. So hopefully you liked this video and if you did go ahead and hit the like button with the thumbs up below and if you haven't subscribed go ahead and subscribe. To view all of the GHL versus Apex series videos you can view them right here. Hopefully you have a great day and thank you for watching.